Hello there and welcome to our basic FA18 Super Hornet Pilot tutorial. We're going to show you how to paint this up. Well, first of all, you know, let's drill a hole in his bottom. This is all about getting that hands free and being able to paint everything um, all nice and easy without kind of touching different parts of his body. You know, we can have this drilled out, a cocktail stick, and that should hold it hands-free as you can see. So starting off with some Mist Color um, self-leveling thinners as well as the Mr. Surfacer 1000. We're gonna make up a nice mixture with our um, a water airbrush here for some priming. About a 50-50 mix should be well nice for a good consistency um, for spraying but as always just make sure you've got a good feathered spray pattern you're below 20 psi and you've got good coverage and that normally gets you there nine times out of ten now as we spray this i do like to just do an all-round very light misty coat right this is just all about um, not really going for the coverage but kind of just getting that kind of paint down to allow it to start sticking um, it's quite easy just to um, press down the trigger cut to air and dry that off um, and we're all good to then start our normal sort of spraying so yes i'm now going to come in and we spray this on so it looks wet right and as it looks wet we kind of just move along to another part of our pilot just here right and we should be able to just get away with doing this probably two coats would get us there and there you go as you can see there's a um, nice first coat all right one more coat and that should be all good just to let you know this pilot is from the um, boeing fa18e super hornet kit biming models in 140 ape scale i am doing a um, step by step um, on this video if you want to go check that out it does help to have a little bit of foam just to stick your cocktail stick in we do have some plastic put here because um, when you actually kind of spray these things down you might notice if we just focus you might notice a little bit of a gap going on there so plastic for um, the vallejo plastic putty is a really good technique where we can just get that gap and inject directly where it is right and then with a quick cotton wool bud if i can just find one we can then actually go off without any sanding or anything along those lines we can just wipe this up all right, so we can literally kind of just crack right on. I mean, hopefully you can see there that gap has been filled with the Vallejo plastic putty. We've wiped it away. There's no sanding to do around it or anything like that. We're all good to go with some more spraying. Now, I just want to get started with a little bit of discussion about colors. Now, for this video, I want to kind of focus on doing his uh, main clothing and the rest kind of applies for doing any kind of like face, shoes, you know, gloves or anything like that, not to just go through every single color with you. Um, so we're going to focus on his overalls here. I'm going to start off with this Calistan green, right? And what this is, this is our base color. At which point, you know, we can use um, the Beltan green as a wash, followed by highlighting the colors up. So as you can see, if we turn this upside down, we've got our dark color going sort of like medium and then very, very highlighted. All right, so we're going to start off with the Castellan green, which we're going to airbrush um, into this. So we're going to start off with, in this pot here, we have... Um, this is our homebrew thinners, you know, please check out the Genesis Models tutorial on making your own thinners for spraying. Um, good for um, these acrylic based um, games workshop paints as well. So we're going to go for about a 50-50 mix with this. Um, you know, Citadel paints are quite thick, so you might have to thin them a little bit more. Right, this one's looking a little bit old, so sometimes you might have to sort of mix up these um, pots of paint as well. So with that mixed up, all right, we can again um, put this straight into the colour cup and mix it as we sort of go. 
again with spraying just make sure that you've got a nice feathered spray pattern you blow 20 psi and you've got you know a decent coverage that in two to three coats you've um, covered your model so as we spray onto this we are looking for that first light misty coat where we don't really see it go down but it just helps all your other coats stick a little bit better again this is quickly and easily sort of a little bit of a dry press down the trigger just to get air right and then we can come in with our sort of wet coats where it looks a bit wet we're seeing more coverage right we're not letting anything cool up and we've pretty much got our first coat down um, as you can see maybe one or two more coats and that should be all good next we come to our shades or our washes for this this is a really nice easy way of adding um, shadows dirt and grime to your model right so if we get you to focus a little bit here right we can now just paint this on we just slap it all on I mean obviously after um, it's had time to dry and there's going to be quite a bit of a um, one a sort of a change in color a bit like a filter but at the same time what you'll see is this paint will kind of go into all those recesses all those nooks and crannies and actually begin to um, create those kind of shadows and whatnot right and then the next step after this is dried is to create those highlights so if you can see how that is going into all those nice little detailed areas to bring it all out into the foreground so after we have all dried you will see how we have all this lovely sort of um, recesses nicely filled in looking a, a nice bit darker and, and more sort of weathered and shadows and all that good good stuff so we've got two options here of how we actually go off and paint the rest right the first option is the easiest which I'll show you first right this is where we do a cool bit of actual dry brushing so I've just got a bit of paint on the end of the a paint um, a dry brush here right and we can just keep brushing at this until we've got a nice sort of well what it says on the tin basically a dry brush so that when we brush onto this I'll do the lower half in our easier way of doing things with this um, dry brush right and you want to just start off lightly at first we don't want to kind of brush at this too harsh too quickly we don't want to be kind of like doing this so as you know this is all kind of been dry brushed in just a couple of strokes right I mean really we're kind of really sort of you know you want to just really pass over these 20 50 times or something right just to get that really cool sort of feathered look to it right now you might be wondering why have I come in with our original color you know this Castellan green the thing is our wash here um, our Beltan green that has changed the color of our Castellan green right so we can actually come in dry brush on top of that and it'll just make it look lighter right and make it look a bit sort of highlighted right so don't feel like you've got to come in with a totally different color so I'm just doing the underside here and hopefully what you'll see is right because we're dry brushing it it's only able to touch the raised surfaces and the raised areas so we're kind of just bringing out um, highlights with a dry brush and you can just sort of see how easy that was now because we're kind of again using Castellan green which was our base color I mean we're not gonna see a major noticeable difference but I just feel like it kind of feathers things in and sort of neaten things up a little bit when we we do use that so we're now going to sort of come in with another dry brush color and it's going to be um, the Loren Forest which is definitely going to be more of a highlight now um, just quickly sort of clean off my brush a bit now with this color it's going to make more of a noticeable difference so you want to be more careful with this one so I am going to try and get just a bit of paint on 
on my brush get it all dry brush afoid so to speak right but then when I kind of do my dry brushing on this I really just want to you know really be light and try to just be careful in applying it and not to go too overboard with it kind of almost tickling it but still kind of like trying to make sure that I'm doing a lot of passes All right and hopefully you can sort of see from just doing that bit of the leg how we're sort of you know seeing the um, surfaces lighten up more and more and more right and we can do go through this process now coming in with mock green now this is proper highlight going on here so you might i do when i kind of get to this kind of stage i do kind of like maybe like let's not quite go dry brushing because you can really sort of mess things up by going a bit too far with something this light so i do like to come in with a paintbrush on this right and just trying to just sort of identify some of those areas that are going to be um, caught by the light and trying to just use the side oops there you go i've kind of gone too far with that see if we can rub that off trying to use like the side of the paintbrush right to maybe just try and sort of get a really sharp line as possible all right hopefully you can just see you know and 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 it's almost like little is best at first i mean you can always highlight this even more all right but i'm really trying to just be so ever so light and i mean you know because you're messing about a bit your paintbrush can dry up quite quickly so i'm just re getting some paint on that and hopefully you can see there's a, a a nice little highlight and if you can just get those areas where you would sort of get the sun coming down all right and we're just touching the odd little bit here and there so there you go i've done that little area just there and hopefully you can see how we're just highlighting things and and creating more um interest in this having darker um in the recessed areas the raised areas we're just getting you know those sun spots on there and kind of getting really cool highlights so now i'll go off and do the bottom half all that and then we'll do the top half in a bit more shall we say better but a bit more kind of um more skillful way of doing highlights right so there's the finished dry brushing of doing our highlights just on our legs here so let's do our top area with some um, painting on highlights so we're going to come with the same kind of colors right we're going to come in with castellan green right but this time we want to go off and sort of thin down our paints right so just get in a bit of a castellan green on an on a palette just here right um you can use water i do like to use a bit of the old um homebrew thinners all right if we just kind of put that in a separate little compartment and then we can just dip into that and when thinning down your paints you just kind of want it so that when you paint onto your piece your model that you're just not getting brush strokes right we don't want those brush strokes and when it comes to highlighting as well um you can sort of feather things in if you kind of get it sort of thinned down so let's get um this part here this nice raised area here let's just sort of show this so i can come in here and we're not going to notice much of a difference but we can almost sort of paint all of this raised area right and because it's thinned down as I say we're not going to see much right we can take some of these you know creases and folds in his uniform right and sort of on the raised areas sort of give them a bit of a paint right a little bit like so um, one other thing is as well is 
I mean you don't have to jump straight in to like the next colour right because what you can also do is because we thin this down it's going to be a bit transparent right so because it's transparent once it's dried you know if we go over and put a second coat on top of it it's going to be less transparent but what we can do is is uh, for example this side we went off and kind of basically painted all this raised area oops i accidentally touched that we um painted this entire raised area right but i could maybe sort of like do the edges now right the edges with a second coat right and by doing the edges that's become shall we say less transparent and it'll just kind of bring that color out a little bit more i know it's kind of light but you know we're getting our bases going right so i'll do the rest of that and we move on to the next color and so the process begins again with our lauren forest where again we want to just get a bit of paint going and we want to thin that down as well about the same consistency right and we want to go off now and do the same process but what we're doing is just getting thinner and finer and finer with the process right so again i'm trying to sort of use as much as you can the side of a paintbrush right because then you can get really sharp edges like hopefully you can see there and as i say just like before you know if you kind of come back and go over the same um, highlight twice you can just make it more highlighted you know less transparent more highlighted up with the color that you're using right and the steadier you are with a hand the more sharper and nicer and neater you can be right I mean you could go on a whole other level as well with this highlighting business um, going into some some really extremes using lots of different colors lots of different mixtures you know being sort of really thin with your paints really sort of feathering it all in but you can kind of see like you know this does take time it takes a bit of skill shall we say a bit of practice but you can sort of see why the um, the dry brushing technique is so much easier right and quicker and like anyone can sort of attempt doing that um, but you can get really sort of fancy by actually painting these highlights yourself um, and what I'll go off do I'll go off and do that with the rest of them um, but then what I'll um, just quickly show you when you know I do kind of like this whole sort of like when you get the mock green which is really 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 um, a highlighted color again We'll give that a bit of a mix sometimes i don't mind mixing from the pot to be fair all right um, and we can sort of um, really really kind of get as sharp as you possibly can get on like a little bit of a corner beer you know like so to just really sort of show that sharp edge of the light just touching it so hopefully you can just see how I've done that little bit of an area there and that little bit of a sharp sharp highlight is all you need because it's such a bright color it really does sort of bring it out hopefully as you can see so I'll do the rest of the fabric so there you have it I've now done all the highlighting on our fabric on the top side um, as you can see I do prefer to, to, to do um, dry brushing it's just like anyone can kind of do dry brushing it it's so much easier the dry brushing more sort of feathered you know you've got to be um, very sort of competent with doing 
brushed on highlights to kind of really sort of um, get it to really be effective so I do recommend dry brushing and you know practice the the brushing on the highlight so all that's left to do now is basically do all the the helmet and the shoes but in the same techniques as I've just shown you so this is, is almost all finished, right? Um, the last little touches I'll probably do is start to think about things like um, mats, satins, and glosses that can really sort of set uh, things off. So I'm gonna start off with, uh, I'm gonna come in with some micro satin, right? Or any kind of satin. I mean, you don't have to be too particular on what brands really. Um, I've never used this, so I might need to fin it or not. Right, it's a clear coat that's going to go on top, so I'll probably just add a little bit to my palette here, and we'll probably just thin this down with a little bit of our homebrew thinners and just see how that goes. Again, I've not used this, so you know, I'm always sort of like, let's just test this, see if there's any problems with that. It doesn't look too bad, um, and I'm going to decide to sort of like paint the actual helmet a bit of a satin gloss right i don't want it to be glossy glossy just kind of like a noticeable sort of difference in something being a um a different sort of surface to the fabric the skin right and with that kind of with a, a, a satin coat on there i'm going to move along with something way more glossy just clean my paintbrush off right we're going to come in with some glass coat gayuzi agent this is by ak interactive i do believe yes it is um this stuff is like super super duper shiny right really good for like glass stuff and whatnot you don't need to shake it you don't need to thin it right we're just going to want a little bit on the end of our paintbrush for this right a little bit on the end of the paintbrush let's bring you back in right focus and then I'm just gonna do his visor, really sort of proper shiny. A bit more on the end of my paintbrush. And this should sort of really bring out that sort of high gloss finish on his visor and really sort of separate things up a bit, right? Because I mean, his mask is black, his visor's black, but you know what, you put some high gloss finish to his visor and it's just almost going to look like a totally different thing. All right, that's going to need a bit of time to dry and you should see that all high gloss finish on there. And that's basically all done. So there you have it. She's all nice and dried up. All the gloss and the satin going on there. Um, it, it has been sort of like a bit of a basic kind of rapid video build. We've covered the the... the basics we've kind of dry brushing and even touching on a bit of intermediate advanced with the the brushing with the paint work uh, but yeah i am quite happy with that that's going to be all nice and good and ready to go in my fa18 last thing to just note is i do recommend i mean we have been using uh, Windsor and Newton uh, uh, Series 7 paintbrushes, really damn good paintbrushes. So I do recommend some sort of cleaning airbrush cleaner, conditioner or something along those lines. Mr. Mr. Hobby does do a really, really good one. I tend to just kind of just dip these in, right, and maybe just sort of let them soak a little bit just on the table kind of like normally try to sort of like prop them up a little bit with something there you go use this bit of sponge um, let them soak in there and you can just sort of then rub them off and clean them up um, and that should be really really good other than that hopefully you've enjoyed our nice little build here of um, painting up a um, plastic um, fa18 pilot but as always until next time my name is bobby waldron this is genesis models and i hope you've enjoyed